What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we are going to be comparing two military pistols. Well, sort of. We're going to be comparing the SIG M17, the Army's new sidearm, and the Beretta M9A3, a updated version of the Army's old sidearm that was introduced but was declined. Before we do that, I want to mention my patron supporters. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate your support, and because of that, we do a monthly giveaway for guns and gear related items. Items, like a K-Bar knife or a pair of Ear Pro or whatever's up. And we also do patron-only content. So if you want to become a supporter, you can go over to Patreon and see those uh, videos that are exclusive only to you. Now getting back to the guns. So what are these? Well, first, the SIG M17 is a polymer-framed striker-fired 9mm pistol with a 4.7-inch barrel, and it weighs about 29 ounces. The Beretta is a double-action, single-action 9mm pistol pistol that has a 5 inch barrel and weighs about 33 ounces. So pretty similar in caliber and barrel length, very close in weight also, but the action is a little bit different. If you look at them quick here, I can show you the pistols. This is a Beretta M9A3, just here right here. I got my O-Lite on here and uh, we'll take that off for comparison speaking. And both of them hold 17 rounds in the magazine. The Beretta M9A3 comes with three magazines. This only comes with two. They both have pick rails. They both have uh, safeties. This is frame mounted and this is uh, slide mounted. I do prefer the safety on the M17 uh, by a pretty wide margin. The safety on the Beretta M9 series is my least favorite part of the gun. Now if we're going to get into accessories, they both come with night sights. I actually, even though the M17 sights are bigger and beefier, I do prefer the sights on the Beretta M9A3 simply because they are a little bit easier to get a sight picture because they don't take up so much of your sight picture and black it all out. I don't like the weird ears that are on the M17. As far as grips go, these grips are adjustable and interchangeable. They come with two different sets. And the SIG M17 is kind of revolutionary where it has the uh, chassis system inside it. They weren't the first to do it, but they were the most popular. So the uh, lower portion of the gun isn't actually serialized. It is able to be purchased as long as you keep your little chassis system there. You can go over to SIG's website and buy smaller, uh, shorter, uh, whatever larger grips you want that they have on their website. So you can change your grip to fit your hand and they don't have the back straps. The downside to that is, is you do have to buy them and the Beretta does come with them. So the first thing I want to talk about between these two pistols is going to be reliability. Are either one of these guns reliable? Well actually they both are pretty reliable. The Beretta during my testing went through a thousand rounds with zero cleaning and it had zero malfunctions whatsoever. Most of that was also ran with a suppressor and it ran just fine. You can see how dirty it is there and it still ran great. Extremely reliable and a track record of being extremely reliable. The SIG uh, M17, the P320 M17, this is a civilian version of the military's pistol, obviously, but it is very, very similar, if not the exact same. It also has a track record of being extremely reliable. I have a thousand rounds for this gun without cleaning and zero malfunctions. Now, as far as durability goes, uh, over the course of military history, the M9 has had a couple of falters. Most of those could be due to uh, just some faulty parts here or there, or the big one was it had some reliability issues in the desert because of the magazines. But as it turned out, they weren't using Beretta magazines. They cheaped out on them. Once they replaced the magazines to Beretta magazines that come with the gun, they had no issues. The SIG M17 has had a few growing pains also where they've had some drop safety issues and they have also had some uh, trigger breakage issues from fixing the drop safe issues. But you're gonna have that when you introduce a new pistol, especially in mass quantities. Uh, basically the uh, people that you sell them to are gonna be your beta testers and that's just how it goes. It was like that with the Glock uh, Gen 4s and it's like that with the M17. So as far as reliability goes, I'm probably gonna have to give them a wash because if you buy either of these pistols and shoot them on a range, 
range or even shoot them in adverse conditions. They're both going to work very, very well. So 10 out of 10 on the reliability for each of these guns. Now we'll get into accuracy. Now for me, for me, the Beretta was a little more accurate. Now maybe that's because I am kind of biased towards the double action trigger pull, or the, sorry, the single action trigger pull, because once you get through the first trigger pull on a double single action, you can see here it is pretty smooth for a double action, but then it will transition to single action and it's a very short and light and very crisp trigger pull. It allows you to be very, very accurate. Standing accuracy, I really liked how the Beretta M9 shot. And Berettas are pretty famous, again, over the years for being very, very shootable guns all around. And the trigger on this, because it has the advanced D spring over the standard M9, it's going to have a little bit better trigger uh, right from the factory, so that's nice. See if we can hit that little target. Yeah, pretty accurate little gun. I like the trigger on this a little bit more than my stock M9. Although the SIG M17 is no slouch in accuracy either. It's got a very nice trigger for a striker fired gun. It's got a pretty good reset, and it does have pretty phenomenal sights. On each of these pistols, I was able to shoot a six inch plate at 50 yards, and for me, that is by far good enough accuracy for a handgun. Wind's getting ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Oh, shit. <laughs> 30 mile an hour wind. Oh, yeah. Iowa. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah. Uh, pretty good, though. Two way bad. 50 yards, six inch plate, moving. Yeah. That ain't too bad. Now, shootability-wise, how do they control under recoil? How quickly can you shoot those uh, large strings of shots up close? How fast does it transition from target to target? I'm going to have to give the edge to the Beretta M9. Uh, the SIG M17 shoots very well, don't get me wrong, and it's definitely usable. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is if I had to compare the two side to side, I can shoot just a little bit faster with the, M7, or with the M9A3 just because of the ergonomics of the pistol. It's a little bit heavier. It helps control that recoil. It's got a little bit heavier dust cover underneath the barrel and it's got a significantly lighter slide. Uh, the Beretta has a light slide to begin with. As you can see here, the barrel, uh, there's no slide covering the barrel, so there's a big piece missing. It allows it to uh, cycle a little bit faster, and it allows it to run a little bit sweeter, in my opinion, than the SIG, which is a little bit top heavy. When you hold the gun, you can actually feel the balance is a little bit off because it's got a very light frame. Like between the weight difference between these two, all that is in the frame, and uh, the frame actually, a heavier frame actually helps shoot a gun under recoil fairly well. And because of that, it makes this a little bit chunkier and a little but snappier as you shoot it. Again, totally shootable. In a self-defense situation, you most likely would not notice the difference at all, but if you're putting them on the timer, which one's faster, it's gonna be the Beretta. Now we'll get into ergonomics here. What I like and what I didn't like about the guns. We'll start with the M17 since it's in my hands. I really liked the trigger guard undercut. I liked the magazine release. It worked really well. The grip texture on the gun is fairly nice. The safety seems like an afterthought and it really wasn't engineered well, although the one thing they did well was put it on the frame as opposed to the slide. That way you don't accidentally engage it when you're racking the slide, which is a big detriment to the M9, and in that I have to give them top marks. The uh, slide release works well. It's not in the way. You're not riding it even though the safety is right there. The takedown on a 320 is really easy, and it actually does have a Leopold uh, Delta Point 
milled or a slot milled right into the slide. So if you take this uh, rear sight off, you can actually put a delta point on there without sending your gun in at all, which is really, really cool. It also has the standard Picatinny rail, which I like. The trigger guard is squared off, which I like as well. And it has these uh, slots in the magazine here. So if you get stuff or dirt in your magazine, you can't eject it. You can strip the magazine out. That was nice as well. It also has front, or front slide serrations, making it easy to press check and uh, use Use the uh, front of the slide to rack if you have a red dot on the back and you don't want to hit it. So the ergonomics of the SIG is really well thought out. The only downside to it is the unneeded high bore axis. And I know some people don't care about that. Totally fine. You guys own SIGs for sure. But the SIG does this thing to where they wanted to match the grip with all their others, like the the P uh, the the 226 and uh, 228 and all those guns. So basically they took a striker fired gun and for whatever reason made a large beaver tail on the back of it and made it much lower on the uh, grip than you really should be holding. Like if you get a Glock, you're higher. If you get an Archon, you're way higher. There's ways to make a striker fired pistol have a bore axis that isn't an inch lower than it should be. And because of that, you get a little bit of snappy recoil, physics being what they are, you're gonna have that. Not a big deal, again, it does still work very well. However, that is a downside, an unneeded downside. They could have easily have ran this beaver tail up. You don't need the same old SIG ergonomics. You can do new stuff every once in a while. Now the Beretta, what I like about the Beretta, I like the metal frame because it only adds four ounces and it helps out with that recoil a lot and it makes it feel better and heftier. Uh, it always reminds me of Snatch, if you guys have ever seen that movie. If it doesn't work, the weight helps because you can hit them with it. Heavy, yeah, it? Heavy is good, heavy is reliable. If it doesn't work, you can always hit him with it. You know, that's totally true. If you pop somebody up the side of the head with this, they would not be happy about that. But I like it because of how it feels and how it feels under recoil. I also like that it has the lighter slide so it feels better when you're shooting it. I love that it comes with a standard threaded barrel and I love the reliability overall with the silencer. This is my go-to silencer gun because I don't have to change a recoil spring. I don't have to pick uh, picky ammo or anything like that. I put whatever ammo I have and throw a silencer on and this gun will work. I like the extended, uh, the extended magazine release. I love that the uh, hammer it has a, a nice uh, has a nice uh, checkering to it, so you can drop that bitch to single action if you want to make a quick shot. I don't like the safety uh, decocker here, but you can change this to just a decocker. So you see how when I have the pistol cocked right here and I were to come across and try to rack this, I could hit this and now the gun doesn't work at all. Well, you can switch that to just a decocker. So if you do come along and you do hit that, it's just gonna pop back up and then you can still go double action. So it, it's not gonna take your gun out of the fight at all. So I, if it were me and I was gonna run this as an absolute duty pistol or military pistol, I would change this out to a decocker and then it becomes much less of an issue. I also like that it has the uh, the beveled magwell. Because this gun is m significantly more in price than this gun is, I like that this gun has some extra features, including one extra magazine, the threaded barrel, the beveled magwell, the uh, multiple grips that you get, and obviously the, the more, uh, in my opinion, superior sights. So this gun comes with a little bit more accessories than this gun does, however, it's gonna be more cost. This comes in right around $800, and this comes in right around $600. So. If you had to pick between one or the other, which one would I pick? Well, if you watch my channel a lot, you know that I like steel frame guns, I like double single action guns, I like 1911s, I like CZs, so if it were me, I would pick the Beretta. The Beretta is stone cold reliable. I'm used to the platform. I like how it shoots and the extra four ounces doesn't bother me that much, especially if I change this out to a decocker. However, if I was handed this, I wouldn't be disappointed. I like, I don't traditionally like SIG pistols that much, and I like the M17 a good amount. It shot very accurately, it goes right where you want it, and overall for the price, it's a pretty don't decent gun. Fast. Reliable, accurate, striker fired, so you get the same trigger pull every single time. You don't need to worry about the double action if you're not used to it, and all around, pretty decent pistol. However, again, if I had to go for it, I would go the Beretta M9. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters. And remember to recycle. I'll check you later.